In this video, I want to go over the mixer. And if you remember from before, the mixer is located right here on the top row. And by going to the top of the mixer window, I'm going to make it as tall as I can. The first thing we're going to look at is everything on the left, which is called the legend. If you don't see it, right here is where you can see hide legend, and you can see that goes away. Show legend, and it shows you everything that is in the mixer. So the first thing we're going to look at is the setting. And setting, this goes all the way across. These are all the settings. These are settings that I put on from the library. Let's take a look at uh, this Whirly, the Whirly mic. And you can see upper piano is the channel strip preset on this channel. If we open up the settings, you can see that you can't get to the library presets from in here. But you can get to the legacy Logic and GarageBand. Legacy meaning the older versions. If we go to the... I'm going to change channels to the tampering channel before we do that. And let's go to li library over here. You can see that here is the legacy and here is Logic and GarageBand, which is exactly the same as legacy here. So you can get to those presets in two different places. But you still have to go through the library to get the new Logic Pro 10 channel strip presets. Within the settings, you can also copy and paste your channel strips to another channel strip. So let's uh, copy and paste a setting. I'm going to grab this one right here. Copy channel strip setting. Go to tambourine. And I am going to paste it. And there you go. Whatever is on this Whirly mic channel is now exactly the same on this tambourine channel. I'm going to uh, reset this channel strip, but it's important to note before we do that, that if you look down here, you can see we have a panning setting and a volume setting right here. When we reset this channel strip, both the panning goes to zero and the volume. So I'll have to turn that down again. So copy, paste, reset. And if you look down here, you can save your channel strip settings and make your own. But uh, that's all we're going to get into now for settings. Next one on the list is gain reduction. And I'm going to hit play, and let's look at the bass track. And you'll watch right here. You can see the bass's gain reduction. If you click it, the compressor comes up. And you can see that this gain reduction is the same as this gain reduction. I would also like to point out that there is a compressor and a limiter on this channel. So when I open up this limiter, you can see that this gain reduction is quite a bit different than this gain reduction. So uh, be aware of that, this is just a quick... When you're looking at these tracks, you can just have a quick look at what gain reduction is going on. I'll hit stop again. The next thing down is the EQ. And again, this is just a quick view of the EQ that is on that channel. So if I open up the bass here, here is the EQ. And this is, the EQ is right here in the effects. And you can see the shape of this. I'll close that. If you uh, double click, actually I'll do this on the tambourine again. If I double click the gain reduction, a compressor is put into the audio effects. And we can ch make changes right there. I'm going to take that off. It, same thing with the EQ. If you double click, it automatically puts an EQ in your audio effects. And you can watch as I make changes to this EQ, you can see the changes on that little display. You can see it doing everything, mirroring everything that I am doing over here. So now you can have a quick picture of what EQ is on that channel. I'll take that off. Next in line is the MIDI effects. There's only one software synth on here with MIDI, and this opens up more plugins for your for uh, MIDI. For example, the arpeggiator that 
We have our glockenspiel. If I turn it off. Nope, so let me just like that track. And you can hear it. So if I turn on the arpeggiator and hold the chord. You can see that it's two octaves. And that's what an arpeggiator does, so. There's a MIDI one on here, and there's a lot more effects within this. A lot more plugins for MIDI, but we're not really getting into MIDI in this class, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Next in line is the input. So when you're about to track, this is a good place to come in and set all your inputs. Right here, this, these are the inputs from your analog to digital converter. So when you're ready to track, you can set up all your microphone inputs from uh, the mixer and you can get a good view of every track that you have and set them up quickly. I also like to have you look over here at the aux channels. You can see the buses are the inputs. And this is important when setting up sends and auxes. I'm gonna have a video, another video coming up where we're gonna go through how to make aux and sends and why, why would you want, why you'd want to use it. So we're not gonna get into that on this video. The next thing down on the legend is audio effects. And this is where you put in your plugins. And you can see there's a bunch of slots here. And it's important to know that the signal flow is from top to bottom. So whatever I put on first, I'll put an EQ, let's say. And I'll put a distortion. It's important to know that the signal flow is top to bottom. When I make effects, when I change it, make changes on this EQ, it affects what is next in line. So it will change, it will affect the sound for this uh, distortion. But since this is below the EQ, the bit crusher, when I make changes to this, it does not affect the one before it because the signal flow is from here to here and down. So that is important to know. The plugin is basically an effect that you can put on any track. I want to quickly look and see what these effects are. So you have amp simulators, delays, distortion, compressors, limiters, EQs, filters, imaging, metering, uh, modulation. So you can see you got chorus, flanger, phasers, ring shifters and those kind of things in here. Here's your pitch shift, changing the pitch. Reverbs, specialized, looks like denoiser and oh, here's a sub bass and utility. Next in line is the sends. And like I said before, I'm gonna take that EQ off really quick. Like I said before that uh, we're gonna get into sends and oxes in, a, in the next video, so. This is a quick look at it, but if you want to know more about it, look at the next video. Next thing on the legend is the outputs. For right now, we're just going to be dealing with stereo output. Um, you can also see that there's buses here. But that's all we're going to get into right now. Here is the groups. And on the next video, I'm going to go over this also. On how to set up groups and why you'd want to use it. But... For now, we'll just look and here, here's where it's at. Automation, I'm going to make two videos on that very soon. And that's what this whole row is. You can turn on your automation right here, turn it off, and these are your modes. But we're going to get into that in the very near future. I'm going to make two videos on that, the tools and the modes. Here are all the icons that you made from your track header. If you remember, if you right-click on your track header. Let's see, here's a tambourine. I'm gonna make that a little smaller and let's see, if you right click, here's percussion, tambourine. And there is the tambourine. So you got a little picture to, to look at and you can find your tracks a little quicker. Below that is your panning. You put it left or right. And if you remember, if you hit option and click it, it puts it to zero. Now this DB row is really nice to look at when you're putting plugins on. Because sometimes when you put a plugin on, it'll make your signal more hot. 
and you can check and see if anything is going over zero. So if you look at EG5, it is going over zero and I don't want it to go, I want it to stay under zero. So you can see that it hit 0.6. I'm gonna turn this down one dB then. I'm just gonna turn it down with a gain minus one. And then if I click this, it'll reset for me. Hit play. Now I'm gonna watch this level and make sure it doesn't go over zero. And now it's looking a lot better. Okay, everything looks like it's staying below zero. We have one at zero, but that's because it has a limiter on it. And next to that, I'll clear that. Next to that is our actual dB. If you look, here is zero dB within our fader. So I'll go back to the tambourine, and if you look, that's 17. So I'll turn it up and down. So now you can see your volume is both a digital number and your fader. Now moving on, let's look at the I and the R for input record, which is exactly the same as the I and the R in the track. And we have the mute and the solo, which is also exactly the same as up in the track. Here it mutes. I'll unmute there, it unmutes here. It's the same button, just in two different places. And looking a little farther down, uh, we find the track name. And you can double click to change the name. And if you come up here to views, we also have these. So if you want to put track numbers under your things, you can just change that view for channel strip components. Take it off if you don't want it. And another view up here to, that's nice to look at is the type and number label. And that throws it up above. You can see you have audio tracks. Here's an instrument track. And these were the order that these tracks were put in. And then you can see here we have an aux channel, aux channel. So if you're trying to find something, you can always go here and set that up to look at it like that. And you can see down here, there's this white bar. This is set up for um, if you have a control surface. And you can hide that by going to control surface. If I can find it, there it is. And you can see that white bar went away. Let's look at options really quick. So you can create new aux channels here. Disable group, we're going to get into on the next one. And that's all we're gonna get into in options for now. And the final thing we're gonna look at is the edit. Now if you look at the top, the top four are exactly the same as the top four functions in the main edit for logic. So you can look at the undo history right here and let's look at the edit up on top and it's exactly the same. Looking more into edit, and you have select all, that's your tracks. So you have your edit, so select audio channel strips. These are all audio channel strips now, so you can kind of have a quick look. Select all auxiliary channels. And let's uh, just grab, select all the instrument channels. There's one instrument channel on here. And here's a deselect all, which will um, basically make it so no tracks are selected. And that's all we really need to know for in here right now. In the next uh, video, I'm going to go over the sends and the groups. And then we're going to have two videos of the automation.